Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And here we have the Cybernet VCO, the VCO block that you find in most of the Cybernet um, sideband CB radios. This is the green VCO block and all those orange VCOs as well. But the more common one, this is the green one. And if you want to expand the channels on your radio, then normally you have to replace this with another VCO that's got a wider capability. So in this video, we're going to be looking at making one of these VCO blocks and see what it takes to make one. So the Cybernet VCO is epoxy potted, as you can see. You can see the circuit board through it. It's got what's called a low permeability core in the middle. And that was the normal thing. If somebody broke the core, they put a normal core in it and it made a mess of the VCO. So here we have the circuit diagram for that VCO block. As you can see, it's nice and simple. All off the shelf components. The only one thing I've had trouble with is finding the coil. But we've got a solution for that and hopefully it's going to work. Now as you can see 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. Please click the subscribe button. It will help the channel and help me out. Thank you. So I designed some circuit boards using the dimensions of the original VCO block. Had them produced and here they are. So we're going to test these to see whether I've got it right and see whether it works. So nice and compact board. Well, double sided. Yeah, very happy, very happy with that. So for the coil. I found a seller on AliExpress that sold bare bones coils, make your own. So I thought, okay, we're going to make our own coil. See whether we can actually do it. Now I've actually inspected some pre-made coils and I reckon I can do it. So we've got some 0.1 millimeter wire, enameled copper wire, should we say? So I think we've got all the parts there that we need to make the coil. So first thing I need to do with these new boards is actually check that my pin placement is correct. Whether they're actually going to fit in the radio at all. And sure enough, my pin placement seems to be good. So that's one thing ticked off the list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of these terminal posts to secure the board, the point where you solder to in the radio. I don't know whether I'll keep these in. They may be too wide as the one millimeter, but we'll see. So I'll put them into the board. They do look a little bit fat, to be honest. So we might have to think of something else for that. But for now, this will do for test. So let's start populating this board with some components. So first off, a nice little resistor, we'll get that soldered into place. There, very good. And by the power of video editing, we have all the rest of the capacitors fitted. Now we're going to solder the terminal pins in. You may hear some sideband radio activity in the background. It was quite busy today on the um, on the sideband frequencies 
So we'll just add a radio on in the background. Funnily enough, it's going to be the radio that this VCO block goes in for test. So there's our terminal pin soldered in. We've got our very cap diode in place. So next thing is we need to make this coil. Now I didn't realize how fiddly this was, but once you get the hang of it, it is quite easy. So there's my first attempt at making a coil. We've got 15 turns, three sets of five. Now with this being enameled, enameled copper wire, we have to make sure we've, we've burnt through the coating while soldering, and we have. So there's our first coil made. So the magnetic shield goes over the top of the coil. And the coil goes in its little metal house. There, it's almost like a bought one. But the question is, will it actually work? So we fitted it onto the board. And the only way to test this is to put it in the radio and see what happens. So here's the Ham International Multimode 2 that we've had on in the background with its green VCO block. And that green VCO block is going to come out. And with a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of work on the holes, those pins are definitely too big. We've managed to get it through and solder it into place. So we're on TP2, VCO test point. We switched it on and that doesn't look right. So after a bit of work, I found out that I had too many windings on my coil and also the circuit board was wrong. I'd put a trace in the wrong place. So I've corrected that for this board just for testing purposes. And we have a working VCO and a working coil. So it ended up being 12 turns inside the coil instead of 15. So three sets of four. And that works beautifully. VCO voltage is now nice and steady. And we can adjust it correctly. So we're just going to go through the manual procedure for setting up the VCO voltage for the multi-mode 2. Which is 3.6 volts in one position, 3.7 volts in this position. close enough and 3.8 volts in this position there nice and steady so we're going to add a little bit of beeswax onto the capacitors just as good practice just in case these get microphonic or anything so we're just using our hot air gun just to gently melt the beeswax. So there, looking good. So it's cooled off. 
very happy looks very good so two coils that are made that's all a learning curve and here's a multi mode too with this test VCO block in and everything seems to be working quite nicely on it we can hear the European stations coming in I've had it on my frequency counter yeah, it seems to be working so we'll test it whilst we're waiting for the new boards to come if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy this type of content click this video don't forget to like subscribe i do have a patreon and thank you very much and we'll see you in the next episode